Hey, this is Notzer, and today's video, we're gonna ask and answer the question, is it worth it to go down the line for the Royal Navy destroyers? Oh yeah, they are. So we're gonna do something slightly differently. I'm gonna have the stats of each tier on the screen as we work our way up, consumables modules associated with it, but the gameplay in the background is just gonna be a bunch of Royal Navy DDs doing Royal Navy DD stuff. Hopefully the gameplay is more compelling for you to learn how to play them rather than each tier having one token video for it. I'm trying something new. Leave in the comments what you think. But the Medea has three 102 millimeter guns, which is unspectacular. Its torpedo systems go out to six kilometer range, which you'll note is greater than the base surface detectability. So you don't have to invest in a commander concealment in order to use these torpedoes, which is great. Unfortunately, that is not the case here on out, but at least at that tier, you can make use of it rather cheaply. At tier three, we've got the Valkyrie, same traits as the previous, You'll note that the Brits are very maneuverable, great rudder shift, single launch torpedo systems. They also come baked in at tier two and beyond with the British acceleration. You'll be familiar to this if you have British cruisers. It just allows you to maintain speed and turns. It makes you very annoying to try and hit, pin down, and that's how these DDs play. They're very elusive. They're surprisingly elusive. Coupling the acceleration with the size of the ship, the maneuverability, and the special smoke charge that is only equipped to British DDs. At tier four, we've got Wakeful. This is the first tier where we have the 120 millimeter guns. Note the fire chance, very high fire chance for the British. The torpedo systems, unfortunately, are still those six kilometer range torpedo systems and as you're working your way up, tier three, four, five, six, you need to invest in Concealment Expert in order to have a chance to incorporate your torpedoes in your regular play. It gets better as you go up the tiers, but early on, don't rely on these torpedoes to ever have a chance to be used. It's just the concealment's bad, and you feel it. AA protection, eh. Consumables haven't quite gotten to the sexy hydroacoustic quite yet. We're still early on. At tier five, we continue the 120 millimeter trend. Still stuck with the six kilometer range torpedo systems, which is a, a downer, but it's a tier five. You don't really expect that much. Note that the surface detectability is getting worse and worse and worse. Note that the consumables don't change still. You still are using damage control or the British smoke, and you're still just playing with your guns. You're still disengaging with your smoke system. If you're fortunate, you can incorporate your torpedoes, but it's not really a significant portion of your play style at this point for the Brits. You'll also notice that there, there's no armor whatsoever on these guys. Also, the 120, they don't need IFHE. If you fire on the superstructure or enemy DDs, they'll be just fine. At tier six, we've got the Icarus, once again, 120 millimeter guns. It has seven kilometer range torpedoes, which outrange the base surface detectability. So you don't need concealment expert to use the torpedoes. Obviously better concealment is always awesome, but I'm just trying to be as efficient with your commander as you can. There's a couple tiers where you don't need it. Absolutely, but of course you'd appreciate it. One other thing that's come online at this point, because it's a tier six, hydroacoustic and you have that slot four where you can select between the improved damage control you know shorter duration or faster rudder shift now usually there's also a third module improved acceleration however since the british have acceleration baked into the ship that module is not offered instead you're left with rudder and damage control and of course i'm going to go rudder so what ends up happening is the Brits have fantastic maneuverability because they have rudder shift and they also have fantastic acceleration because it's baked in. These guys are so elusive. They are so hard to pin down. And then the final new trait, hydroacoustic. Hydroacoustic for the Brits is wonderful. At tier six, it's the same as the tier 10 version. It detects torpedoes and surface ships at three kilometer range. 
plus it lasts for a really long time. So it's just an outstanding new direction that Wargaming apparently are going, where the line itself has a, a defined identity all the way through. At tier 7, we have the Jervis. It still has 120 millimeter guns, it still has super high fire chance, it still only has 7 kilometer range torpedo systems. Note that the surface detectability is worse, so yes, concealment expert required to use these torpedoes. But maneuverability is fantastic. Obviously, torpedo, single launch. You have your hydroacoustic, which is a wonderful tool to protect yourself or teammates in an area. The British were initially described as defensive in their plane. And that's very true. The quick smoke system allows you to drop off detection immediately. You don't have to wait out the 20 seconds that so many other DDs have to because their, their smoke is not as active in the play. But for the Brits, that's totally what you need to incorporate. You need to learn how to use it. It saves so much damage when you use it aggressively to drop off detection. Keep in mind though, it still is your smoke. So you don't wanna make this a norm for most of the game. You really would prefer to try and be as efficient with your tools as you can. But, I mean, these tools are great and you really wanna incorporate that play in every moment. At tier eight, we've got the Lightning. The Lightning, once again, has the 120 millimeter guns, but eight kilometer range torpedo system, improved detectability. Also, because it's the Lightning at tier eight, we have access to the fifth slot for modules. And of course, we're gonna equip concealment module. So we're gonna be even more concealed, just absolutely outstanding concealment. Couple that with your torpedo systems, hydroacoustic, smoke, the lightning's beautiful, it's gorgeous. And a unique trait that starts to come online, 360 degree turret traverse. The lightning is the first with all three and the Jotland and the Daring continue this trend. And this trend allows you to be very aggressive, bow into the target, maneuvering just slightly to get all three gun turrets into the action, and then maneuvering away in order to absorb and avoid. It's a really active defensive play, and I really enjoy it. I love the aspects that have existed so far on the Brits. 120, super high fire chance. The lightning is honestly outstanding. If you can get up to the Lightning, you should keep it. You should absolutely keep it. But the Lightning is not the end of the line. The Lightning is merely the end of the 120 millimeter guns. And I really like to use Ray Location a bunch. I think Ray Location is by far the best skill you can take outside of concealment. For a DD, it allows you to be aggressive, it allows you to be defensive, it allows you to blind torpedo, it allows you to do so many things. At tier nine, we've got the Jutland. Survivability unchanged, really. Same sort of low armor. The armament, though, changes. It goes from 120 millimeter to 113. It maintains the same sort of damage on high explosive versus AP, fire chance. Unfortunately, though, since the gun caliber is 113, that means that normal high explosive will fail to do damage against the hull of every single ship in the game. Only the superstructure, with its super low armor, will allow the high explosive to do any damage. And this is a real concern. I have initially thought that, you know, concealment, ray location, that's all you need. You could use your AP because it has better AP pen angles, sort of like the heavy cruiser Des Moines for the Americans. Unfortunately, the community has caught on on how to counter the ship rather effectively very quickly. Angle, bow, or stern, they can't really attack you that well. AP requires more angling or less angling in order to do damage, so you're ended up basically doing nothing. So I would highly recommend that you invest in Inertia Fuse High Explosive. The community has spoken and they know how to play against these guys if you don't have it. AP is not enough. High explosive that does no damage is not enough. You need IFHE just to exist comfortably in a one versus one. But once you invest in it, and I love concealment, I love radio location, I take all those skills, 
But once you invest in it, there's really not a situation where you fail to succeed. H-E-A-P, torpedo systems, maneuverability, the acceleration, the smoke systems, the heel, hydroacoustic, they've got it all. They are outstanding. I love every second of the British DDs. And boy, since we spent so many seconds grinding up, we've made it to the Daring, which is tier 10. The Daring also has 360 gun turrets, as does the Jutland and the Lightning. It also has the 113 millimeter guns, which require IFHE against a competent player. And I hate to break this to you, but pretty much everyone is competent about how to counter these guys at this point. When I was initially playing, I was like, Shimakaze! Ashimakaze was able to avoid all my gun damage because they angled appropriately. I'm not going to deal with that crap. But the Daring at Tier 10, more guns, more everything. It's got, you know, more torpedo damage. It has better maneuverability, better speed, better, you know, everything. The detectability, though, is getting worse. The absolute best, fully concealed, you know, concealment skill, module, camo is 6.0 kilometers. That is an issue. That is something you have to sacrifice. But, I mean, the guns are just outstanding. The ARC is a... It's somewhere in between an American and I think a German would be a good... Or maybe a, a French ARC. So, they're very floaty. But if you park near an island or if you get good damage on a target, they're going to have a high fire chance. You're going to have a really high fire chance. It feels wonderful, APHE. The daring is fantastic, the 360 gun turret, it's the size of the ship. I love the British DDs. I thought that the whole line was outstanding. I thought that the line itself gave me a lot of unique experiences with the smoke and hydroacoustic, single launch torpedo systems. It's got a whole package of fun. It's really fantastic, it's really enjoyable to play. Every single tier has its own challenge that you have to consider. There's all there's a little bit of commander control where a build here will be more efficient, more effective than a build at a lower tier or a higher tier. I love it. I love everything about it. It's so much fun to play and to plan with. There's nothing really I'm disappointed with on these guys. Once I invest in an IFHE on my tier 9 my tier 10. I was reading some of the comments and I saw you guys were having issues in the comments here. Let me know what you think of this video format, everything about it. Tell me what you think, feedback. I love all of it. I appreciate all of you. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.